Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Tonight, we're going to explore some ideas about getting into central equilibrium in unconventional ways and um, unconventional postures and to uh, uh, kind of break out of the idea that it has to be a set relationship between you and earth and sky but it, there is it is a wide variety of relationships that you can establish and um, before we get to that I actually like to talk a little bit about Taiji Chuan as relationships and sort of broadly Chinese philosophy as a as looking at life as relationships so uh, let's talk about that first so the um, an idea hit me recently like that, oh, it's a, uh, this is pervasive throughout Chinese philosophy and be it Taoism, Confucianism, Buddhism, the um, Chan Buddhism, the, 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 the three treasures, so that it is a statement of, of your relationship in any moment to what is. And whenever you are evaluating the, the things in the, that you're observing, there's also, you create a um, sense of it by its relationship. And the, um, the primary relationship that is, uh, that we think of in terms of Chinese philosophy is the, the relationship of yin and yang, where, the, we, we look at that as anything that is stuff is either expanding or contracting and in some way or another. And the, that relationship, and actually they're doing both at the same time. And what we are looking at at a given moment, the part that we are focusing on is uh, what determines whether we consider something yin or yang. And in the broadest sense, the idea is that yang is expansive. It's going out, it's opening. And yin is contractive, it's coming in. So, and then it takes on a wide variety of of qualities that uh, the, you can assign to it. You can say hot and cold, hot is yang, cold is yin, but it's essentially hot is expansive and yin is contractive or cold is contractive. So you get that, uh, you get that idea there that it's uh, light, light is, ah, it, it opens us up and darkness takes us into, a contraction. So we uh, we get that. So anytime we're looking at uh, anything in the world, we can actually assign yin and yang qualities to that. And that uh, it's no more true than anything else, but it is, happens to be a pretty neat way of talking about things. And it is helpful. That is, it is useful. It's pragmatic to to discuss that, particularly whenever we're talking about Chinese internal martial arts, because that is the language that the whole system has been using for hundreds of years. So we kind of get in, into the groove with that and we're able to communicate to each other with these things. So it's not like that these are fixed set objects. They are statements of relationship. So the ability to, one way, I guess one way to use this to create positive effects is to create a separation between yin and yang in your own mind. Because what is has no yin and yang, it's just what is. It's, it is you know, you know, what we call Tao, that is you know, this is the way it is. 
But whenever we look at it and we say, oh, what is my relationship to that? Then we can start to like see things. So, you know, the, the classic, you know, the ancient uh, way of explaining it was the dark and the light side of the mountain. If you're on the, you know, if you're looking at the, uh, the mountain from the, from the dark side, that means the sun is on the other side. And that's the yin side. And you go to the other side, that's the yang side. And so this is your relationship to the mountain. And it locates you in that, in that moment. If we're talking about your energy or your movements, it's how you are expressing it, whether your hand is going out yang or it's coming down and in, it's yin. And it's just a way of talking about that. But uh, as a practical matter, if we can assign yin and yang to something and create a separation between them, that separation, as long as we hold it mentally, allows us to create an energy flow. And again, energy in this case, or chi, is, is another statement of relationship. It's a statement of the tension between two points, two, two things, two, you know, this one stuff and another stuff. And we have this insubstantial thing, this non-stuff, which we call chi. And then, but chi can become very substantial if you really get into it, you really feel it, and you start to, okay. And then even then you can look at it from a yin and yang. The more you can hold these poles in opposition, the more chi that you can generate in your system. So the, um, it's something to practice as a, yeah, within any say Tai Chi form, Qi Gong, anything like that, to be very aware of, of yin and yang. And we consider that, you know, in, in, in the, the Taoist model, you know, the, that which precedes the yin and yang, the separation into two is the one, which is the Taiji. And so we, that, that becomes like sort of a, a neutral state where we moved into form without separation and where we're kind of in a non-thinking kind of knowing state. And then prior to that is the Wuji, which is the formless or the nothingness or the, um, the emptiness. There's different ways of talking about it depending on what your relationship is to that. But it's these are all different ways of talking about that which precedes the form, the emptiness that precedes the form. So learning to to be able to familiarize yourself to get like, oh, okay, so you, you're able to get into these states, then allows you to uh, use this this to generate different qualities of energy as well as different movements and allows you to animate your body in a way that is creates vitality it creates energetic um you know power that comes from that so uh i would like to do a an exercise um it's actually the opening of the Wudong Mountain uh, Tai Yi Wuxing Chuan, which is um, Wudong Mountain is of course the, the legendary birthplace of Tai Chi Chuan. And the Tai Yi is different than the Tai Ji, which is the, um, it, the Tai Yi is, is like ultimate mind kind of a thing and big mind and wuxing chan means uh, five elements form so i want to do the just a, a, a few movements this is a rather lengthy form but we want to just do the first few movements which focus on 
the separation of yin and yang. And it's kind of a neat exercise, um, even if you just remember this, this, this part here. And you know, of course, the video will be avail available on, on YouTube if you want to practice it. But I find it a, a very useful meditation. And the whole form itself is quite, quite mind blowing. But um, we're going to play with that a little bit. And I'll talk you through it. So that you can uh, you can explore it as on an, an energetic basis, and, and also watch how it it plays with your internal state. So let's uh, watch you stand up. Okay, so I'll uh, so okay, I'll turn my back to you. It might be easier to follow. I can do it the other way too, uh, after we do it this way. But just try to get the get the hang of this. All right, here we go. So this is the preparation. So here we want to find the three pillars. We want to establish our three pillars. Feel the, the ball, feel the balls of your feet. Reach with the crown of your head. And feel the connection between the balls of your feet. Feel the relationship between the balls of your feet and the crown of your head. And extend your awareness through the balls of your feet into the earth below. Extend your awareness through the crown of your head to the heavens above. And feel your relationship between those two. Tuck in the chin, open up the jade pillow gate at the base of the skull. Knees are unlocked. Relax your lower back and drop your way loo. Located on your coccyx. So you're kind of flattening out your lumbar area. Allow your pelvic bowl to level. This is a tendency to, for, for many of us to have it tilted forward. We want to have it so it, the hips are, are, are level. So are the shoulders. We want to keep that relationship between the shoulders and the hips aligned. Reach out Feel your elbows, feel the, feel the elbow chin, point and reach with your index fingers. Bow down and back just to release the, the quad. We want to get sum qua. And just pause a moment and just feel into that form. And feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee. Spiral down to the left. So you're loading up the right qua, right leg. And turn to the right and step out. With your left foot. Do the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, spiral down to the right, loading up the left leg and turn, pivoting on the right heel. Where is now 50 50. And here we're in the Wuji part of the program. It's not complete Wuji because you're probably still aware of your form. But as part of the, the myth of all this is that we are exploring the emptiness part where we're not doing anything. We're just embracing being for its own sake. presence. And 
sink a little bit. And carry as you raise your hands, palms up. Up to chest height. Reach with the elbows, open up. Palms facing your chest now, arms rounded. So we've moved from the Wuji. Now we're into the Taiji. So this is a unified state, an unbroken state of form. We've gone from the formless to the form. Yeah. Feel into your body, feel your elbows reaching out, feel your fingers, feel your feet, feel, reach to the crown of your head, feel the balls of your feet. You want to feel all those things and yet don't think about them, just feel them. Now sink and rotate your forearm so the palms face out. It's just that simple move has created a, a different energy. We're still in the Tai Chi, but we've created a different state of Tai Chi. Kind of radiating outward. Very slowly separate your hands. And here we're beginning the process of creating a distinction. We're opening to the two, the yin and the yang. And we do that by creating separation. We're separating our hands, we're creating folds in opposition. Now we're going to create yin and yang. We do it because we say, oh, this one's yin, this one's yang. We begin by feel the ball of your right foot, set your right knee, spiral down to the right, and rotate your forearm. Go back, go back here, back to here. We're gonna, we're gonna spiral down to the right. We're gonna rotate the forearm and bring the right leg in. So now you're standing, all your weight is on your left leg. You just feel into that. Reach of the crown, really feel your central equilibrium in this posture. Your right hand is yang, your left hand is yin. Step with the right foot, right ball. Push your right knee forward, set the right knee. Reach with your right elbow. Rotate your forearm. And reach out. The weight is about 70, 80% in your right leg. So your right hand is your yang hand. 
but feel into your yin hand as well. And notice that the energy is very powerful in both. Now feel the ball, pivot on your left heel, turn your foot out a little bit, feel the ball of the left foot, push your left knee out, set that, spiral down to the right. So you're loading up the left claw. Reach with the left elbow and turn. And now you're reaching out with the left hand. The left hand is the yang hand. The right hand is the yin. And feel into that. Feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the left, right hand comes down, left hand, and then circles up, left hand comes down, and your left foot comes in. And now your left hand is your yang hand. Your, your central equilibrium, you're, you're fully loading into that, that right foot, right? So you want to have that, you want to feel that central pillar going from the crown of your head to the ball of your foot. You step out with your left foot. Feel the ball of the left foot. Push your left knee out, set that. Reach out with your left hand. Put your elbow and rotate your forearm and circle out. Your left hand is your yang hand. Your right hand is your yin. Feel the, feel the relationship between the two. You're reaching with both. Give it on the right heel. Right ball, set the right knee, spiral down to the left, set your right elbow, and turn. Your right hand is the, the young hand now. Left ball, set the left knee, spiral down to the right. You're loading up that left leg now and set your left elbow and turn. Left hand is the yang hand. Left ball, set the left knee, spiral down to the left, bring your right foot in. Right hand comes down. Step out with your right foot. Right ball, push your right knee out, set that, spiral down to the left. Set your right elbow. Just feel into that for a moment. So you're starting to the process of loading up that right claw, right leg. And then turn. Bring your right hand up. Right hand is young, left hand yin. Bring your left hand around and sink into your left leg. You got about 80% in your left leg. Your arms are reaching out, reach out with your elbows, reach out with your wrists. Your fingers reach to the crown of your head. Feel the expansion there. Turn and pivot on your right heel so that now you're back to Taiji.
Feel the wholeness. Sink, rotate your the palms of your hands, press down. Sink. Empty out. And return to the Wuji. Feel the emptiness. Embrace the non stuff. Feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the left, loading up the right leg and step in with your left foot. Take a deep breath. Disappear the chi. Empty out. Yeah. Take a seat, please. <clears throat> How was that for everybody? Scott. Whoa. <laughs> that's that's all the words I got. Wow. <laughs> you liked it. <laughs> oh yeah. That's, yeah, I'm gonna play with that. That's yeah, the different energies is really, really fun. It's, it's definitely a different, really primal kind of energy there. It yeah, uh, and, it, yeah. and a fuck ton of it. A fuck ton of it. <laughs> Uh, yes. <laughs> cool. Anybody else? Dennis. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm finding things I know I couldn't have done a few months ago. Wonderful. I, in, my, in my legs, like we talked about this a few weeks ago, I found this the substantial and substantial. I can stand on my substantial legs that I couldn't do before. My legs, which strongly the yin and yang, I can do that. But now I've noticed. In my arms, and, and the yin, the yin, the yin was very light. My my arm, my yin, yin arm was very light, and the yang became very heavy. And when I switched, it became light, and it, 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 it and even though the arm was the same weight, if they one the heaviness in the yang yang arm was very heavy, and I found that very interesting. I mean, obviously they're this. The weight didn't change, but the heaviness was very, I was very aware of it. Beautiful. Beautiful. It's great to, to observe your relationships to your body in these different postures and, and also with a different mindset and how that affects your felt sense of your body. So I think that's, that's great. Nick, did you have some? Uh, just Valerie no. does. Yeah. Um, it just 
probably when we got done uh, realizing that doing the same thing, but not even stepping, you know, possibly shifting the weight to one leg or substantiality from one leg to the next leg and, you know, being yang in one hand and yin in the other or arms, uh, you didn't, you don't need to go anywhere. <laughs> you, know, I mean, you, you can do, you can do it, you know, um, I, I, does that make sense? Yes. Explore the world without leaving your home kind of a thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yes, yes. The, uh, it's so elemental that it uh, allows you to get this sense of, of pervading whatever. <laughs> There's, it's, it's hard to, uh, hard to talk about it because there is, it, yeah, like I say, it's so primal. It's, it's you know, we're, we're, the closer we can allow ourselves, the more we can allow ourselves to, to go there, um, to really empty out and really feel into those things, the more it, uh, it opens up to new possibilities. Jonathan, you're gonna have to unmute. Start over. The whole yin yang transfer, the subtlety of the transfer, uh, the dimensions that are in there came across in this exercise. You know, it's like if I do a ward off left, right? And, and, and so my left's my yang hand, but we know, you know, years, we've been doing this for years now, you know, just by activating, really activating the yin hand, you can feel how much energy is going into the yang, like the yang, the, the right, the yin hand is not a dead hand. And it really has that role to play of, of energizing uh, that, you know, the left hand in a, in a, in a ward off. Uh, in this, it was almost like trying, and I don't know quite what to call that, that energizing yin hand, because it's almost like a yang type thing, you know, feeding the, the yang hand. But it occurs to me that in a word off left, even though your, 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 your leg is, is loaded and your left arm is loaded, it ought to be such that if somebody were to attack you from behind, that yin hand could come into play some and almost become a yang hand. I mean, I don't know. I would, it makes me want to try to experiment. No, you're, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. And that's, and that's ideally what we're going for. It's like it's, it's it's not just the young hand that is that is the business end, you know, right? It's it's you know it's the business end in the moment because this is why I'm getting back to it being relationship, your relationship right. to your body rather than it being any kind of fixed idea, and just the idea that we're going in and out of yin and yang, you know, going from the wuji to the taiji to the yin and yang to back to the Taiji, back to the Wuji, and, and be able to say that all of these different phases are part of the game. And all of them we can experience at any moment and in, 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 at any time. Um, yeah. And so we can, we can go there and being able to be mindful of that takes Taiji Chuan as a spiritual practice to a whole new level. Mm -hmm. If you can be mindful of that. Mm -hmm. Lynn. So what Jonathan just said helped me some because I was, I mean, it was no doubt which hand was the yang hand and switching it, but the yin hand still felt so powerful, like so full of energy that I was like, am I like double yanging it here, right? <laughs> I didn't I didn't have the, the kind of like the, the yin hand got much lighter like Dennis talked about, which makes sense to me. I just had so much power in the yin hung that was like a backup or uh, yeah, I, I'm not, wasn't quite sure what to, to think about it. Uh, my, in, in, in my particular model, um, which I, you know, draw from, you know, a lot of traditional sources, but the uh, substantiality and insubstantiality becomes, becomes a factor because that says how much stuff is present and how much non-stuff. And so we can feel, if I say, oh, this is yang, this is yin, 
but if I'm connecting the two up, they both have the same amount of stuff. Okay, and there we have chi as stuff, chi as substantiality, and even though chi itself is about as insubstantial as, as you can get, it, it still has within it the potentiality to be stuff or non-stuff, depending on how much you are, how much density of thought goes into that, into that moment. Your ability to be mindful, your ability to go beyond mindfulness and into intentionality. So mindfulness is still a, a passive thing. It's, it's an observational thing, whereas intentionality is directional. It's saying, no, this is important. And you say, this is important, this is important. The relationship between these two is important. The energy that defines that relationship is also important. That's intentionality. It's saying, I choose to make this important. And and that's what makes it happen. That's what makes it work. Nick. Well, I was going to ask, for me, it seems like that's actually getting beyond, um, beyond, beyond a consciousness that, ex, that implies being outside of it somehow. It's fully occupying the experience, right, at right. that point. Right. Okay. So you're no longer in observational mode. There is no separation between you and it, but you can be, and that's the beautiful thing about a super conscious state is that you can toggle back and forth. So you can say, yes, I feel my chi, which is observational. And then quickly go back to feeling your chi, which is, is, is you know, a direct relation to, to what's going on. So to think about it as substantial or insubstantial is a cognitive event. It is something that I'm doing, I'm thinking about, I'm putting it into language, I'm saying, okay, a cognitive event is different than a non-cognitive event. A conscious moment is different than a pre-conscious moment. And these are great because these allow us to have little markers that take it out of serendipity when these things happen. It's like, oh, Chi happened to me today. It's like, no, no, I make chi. I make chi by my intentionality. And if you can get to that point, we've gone way beyond just exploring the, the world and, act, and actually creating the world. Richard. Um, good. Hmm. Could I, could I ask you to flow through the form that we just did facing us? No, no talking, just to see the flow? I, I can do it talking too. Uh, okay, I'm just, I'm just trying. I, I was uncomfortable with my hand position, which was occupying me a little too much. Okay, uh, I'd, be, I'd be happy to, because okay. I think it's, it's be good to get that on, on, on the video too, just to be able to see that, uh, that there. So uh, let me just do that right now. Because it's a lot of fun to do, and uh, you don't have to twist my arm to, to do it. So here we go. So I get my three pillars in. into the Wuji. And to the Taiji, the becoming form. This is still Taiji, but this is expansive. Yeah, reach with those elbows, reach with the wrists, reach with the fingers. And you can feel the expansiveness of it. It's a very different kind of flow there. You're radiating outward. So rather than actually 
expanding it's it, the radiance is coming out and then from there you begin the separation of yin and yang Sit good to your back leg. Turn back to the Tai Chi. Back to the Wu Ji. Disappear the chi. Thank you. You're welcome. That was, that was great. Thank <laughs> really, it was you. no problem. No problem. <laughs> My pleasure. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> yeah, Scott. Uh, so I, just watching that, I mean, I just was filled up almost as much as doing it just watching it. <laughs> pretty, pretty interesting because i was really meeting i guess because i was really meeting what you're doing and wow right right so uh, we're but, all connected the, the the group is 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 connected there and so it's it's easy to to get into that resonant field which is extremely powerful and uh, uh -huh. i had a an opportunity to to do the wudong Tai Yi form with Master Yang on Wudong Mountain at a at a monastery in Wudong. So it's a, it's a that was that was kind of trippy to to be able to actually to to do that and and to you know in front of some some uh, some monks that were that were watching us at the time. So that was that was uh, that was kind of cool. So we had had a lot of fun with that. Yeah. Oh, and I just wanted to say that I had the exact same experience that Lynn had. And I was, you know, at first I was like, well, I must be doing this wrong because both of my hands are young. But I let that go. I was like, well, what do I, you know, what do I need to think about that? Right. Just think of the, the, you're feeling the substantiality of the, of the chi. The, so you've shifted to such an insubstantial state yourself that the chi itself becomes really substantial. And so Master Young talks about it as like, you want to, you start off and you're like 80% body and 20% chi, and then you flip that around and you're like 80% chi and then 20% body, and then you flip that around and you disappear the chi, and then you're 80% spirit and 20% chi. So they, they kind of, you, you, <laughs> you, you kind of create this, you distill your substantiality as you go along. And as you do that, then each 
each layer of what was previously insubstantial becomes quite prominent in your awareness. Cool. Valerie. So um, just, you know, you're playing around with this. Uh, say you're in the posture where, you know, you're substantial in your right leg and you have your right arm is elevated and that is your yang arm and the other is yin. I mean, there's no reason really why you're, even though you're substantial in your right leg, that you just can't switch, you know, and say my left hand is down and now my left hand becomes, because we're, you're feeling so full in both hands, but it's where your intention is, then your opposite hand becomes young and this one takes the back seat. You know, the one that's elevated takes the back seat, right? Just to play around with that. Exactly. And it goes back to what I was talking about last week. I talked about the four steps for Kung Fu. Duplication or replication, getting it right, getting, you know, being able to understand how to do this thing, right, that we're doing. The second was understanding, knowing what it is you're doing. So you're not just aping the, uh, the movements of, of a teacher, but you actually understand what's going on. The third step was judgment. Is this right for me? Is this, is this a, good, a good exercise for me? Is this what, the, you know, how can I use this? Is this practical? Is it, you know, is it effective for me? And then the fourth step was what else is possible? which is what you're talking about there. It's like, oh, hey, if I do this, if I really master this, which in that moment you were mastering it, it's like, oh, then that's possible too. You know, and then you, you create these different opportunities for exploration and, and then, then the fun begins. <laughs> Dennis. Yeah, I want to I want to thank Jonathan. The comment he made was uh, it was well, it was obvious yet kind of profound when he mentioned that he was talking about the uh, the ward off and the two arms being yin and yang. And it just struck me, well, yeah, it's obvious and that's that's where the power of the ward off comes from. It's the separation of yin and yang. The, op the poles in opposition. And I well, obviously, I, I guess I knew it, but it just just struck me. It was an aha moment for me. I want Beautiful. to thank you for it. Beautiful. Thank you, Jonathan. Because it creates, this is the understanding part. You know, yeah. we, we, we get it right that we understand it. It's like, oh, okay. Which then, you know, allows for further exploration. Not just waving your right arm off and pushing somebody away. It's the expansion. Right. Jonathan. Mute. You're on mute. You're on mute. You're still on mute. Jonathan, you're on mute. I got it. Actually, I wasn't asking a question. I was actually just trying to sort of do it a little bit, but I will make a <laughs> comment that you you really can pulse the uh, the yang hand with the yin hand when you're in a ward off, which is really cool. Just yes. you know, just keep pulsing it. It's just very cool to do. Beautiful. It, it activates that relationship again, like it puts the intention of the relationship there, moment and moment and moment and moment. Good. Valerie. Um, so I've been, you know, given a lot of thought or feeling of the, um, you know, lifting the knee one and really feeling the rooting down into the ground. So that becomes, you can also do that there, right? I mean, you can put your intention in lifting and kind of mellow out the roots, right? And then you can switch that. So you do get that pulls and opposition happening at the same time. Yay! <laughs> it goes back to what I was saying before about relationship. It's like my relationship to these two points, my relationship to heaven and earth through these two points, you know, my relationship to my body. All these things are about relationship, you know, are about like, okay, and, you know, yin and yang is just one way of expressing relationship, substantial and insubstantial, another way of expressing relationship. You know, the five elements are another way of expressing relationship. 
So they're all all different ways that we get to to play with, which and, and we are able to create a a system which then is useful. Scott. <laughs> His hand was forward. His hand was bigger. <laughs> well, actually, I just wanted to comment on that. So I just did that while you were, while we were talking and kind of switched them back and forth. Holy crap. <laughs> really? I mean, holy crap. I know. I know. I was right there. I, you know, it, it's, it's like you said, you don't have to. <sighs> Breathe. You don't have to leave home. <laughs> you know, to take the trip and it's really yes it's it's that relationship you're talking about and oh my god talk about the possibilities fuck yeah <laughs> it, it's just you know it's some of these things that we do you know it's like oh yeah i, I kind of know that and when you're doing it you know you're realizing more and more and you're feeling it more and more and I just got such a rush, just such a rush of <laughs> all of the possibilities, you know, just all of the possibilities, endless, limitless, just doing anything. It can become that, you know, that's, that's, that's really cool. That's really cool. I, yeah. Yeah, breathe. Eloquently <laughs> stated. Eloquently stated. That was that was that was lovely. <laughs> Richard. <laughs> um I I've, I've been realizing that um when we when we're here, we all feel very full. And it's like the and it's like the density can be moved in any direction. I'm trying to start to feel this fullness in every posture. Um, I'm trying to say, say, but you know, I've got this incredibly full feeling here. I should have it here as well. Yes. Um, so I'm starting to, that's uh, just as I did it, my hands started to tingle. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's it, really helpful it, to me. Was everybody, how did you feel about doing this? Did 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 that? Is that cool or what? <laughs> I, was, I was gonna say flipping cool, so yeah. It's fucking cool. Yes. Okay. Good. <laughs> uh, well, I was gonna say flipping, but you know, same thing. Uh, okay. Stan. You're on mute. You're on mute, Stan. Okay. You're still on mute. Yes. Now I think. Uh, all I gotta say is I gotta see the form and try it again because I felt a lot of stuff, and uh, it's hard to make out in, in the first time doing it as to what is what. So uh, I'm looking forward to the form uh, to see it on the on tape, and uh, I think uh, we can get going a long ways. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Go ahead, Valerie. Okay, I think this is this is rather obvious, or at least it's, you know, I've I've said many times <clears throat> that um, you know everything is in the possibilities of everything is in the very first movement, right? And but people would be bored coming into a class, and that's <laughs> all you do is give them one movement or one half a movement or the beginning <laughs> of the movement, but it's it's really all there. You don't even need to go further. I mean, you know, of course we want to, but you don't need to. It's it's all there. I don't think I really, really got it until tonight. It just, wow. you know, that, <laughs> yeah, you know, oh, sign up for me, you know, for two two years of classes, and we'll do one move. <laughs> That's only yeah. for the advanced class, Valerie. I know, <laughs> I know, but that's what, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, but that's a shame. <laughs> you know, it's almost a shame because um, of what you're missing. 
You know, I mean, did it take me really 42 years to to really get how much is in that very first movie without having to add anything else? You know, geez. (laughs) Yes, yes. Mm. Oh, sorry, uh, we didn't get to the... (laughs) the uh, central equilibrium stuff, but uh, we had fun. And uh, thank you all so much for these wonderful comments. This has really, uh, really been delightful. And, uh, and thank you for your participation. So um, thank, you. Uh, yes. <laughs> thank you, Maria. Yes. Thank you, Maria. 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 Thank you, Thank you, Maria. 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 Thank you, Bye-bye. Bye.